Bwana Yesu asifiwe. We are so, so excited that you've tuned in for day four of the Harvest Conference Revival Meetings. Today is Wednesday and we are so, so excited that you are tuning in. Remember the link is available for you to share. Share on your WhatsApp groups. Host a watch party. Let people know that midweek service is about to begin. We have a number that's available on the screen and these are our pastors that are on call. If you need somebody to pray with you, to agree with you, if you need somebody, if you would like some counseling as well, just reach out to those numbers and there's somebody at the end of the line with your heart in their mind. At this point, I'd like to invite the worship team for a nice and an amazing moment with God. Father, we praise you. Yeah. He is holy and reigns in power. Our God, Yahweh, sovereign King and full of wonder. Yeah. 
you're doing, for what you've done, oh Jesus. Forever we praise you. Yeah. There is no one like you, Jesus. Help me sing. Forever we praise. Forever we praise. Forever we praise. Only you, only you. Forever we praise. Only you, my God. Forever we pray. Forever we praise. You've been so good, you've been so good forever. Forever we praise. No one can be compared to you forever. Forever we praise. No one can stand beside you. Forever we praise. You've been so great, you've been so good. Forever we praise. You've been so good, you've been so good.
voice help me sing there is only
There is only one name with power, with power, with power, with power to say. I don't know what you're going through, but there is only one name. You can call onto that name tonight. There's power to heal, power to save, power to deliver, power to liberate. There is only one name. If you believe in you, will be saved. It is power to save. safety in you, Jesus. Thank you for being a good father. There is no one else like you, Lord. We believe in you tonight, Jesus, that you are able to do above and beyond what we could think or imagine. Well, hello and Bwana Yesu, asifiwe, what a joy and privilege it is to have you join us on today. My name is Brian Moshigadi and I am thrilled to be here on this 30th day of September, the last day of September in the year of Restoration and Demonstration 2020, which also happens to be day four of the Harvest Conference 2020. Come on, make some noise and celebrate Jesus because he has surely done some great and mighty wonders. I am thrilled that in this season we've been going through uh, the Harvest Conference that even now the Lord has allowed us to be able to do this. This has been the focus edition and we are so glad to be able to fix our eyes on Jesus. Of course I'm going to start by reading um, our theme verse that has been Philippians chapter 3. That's what um, has been guiding us uh, this entire season. Philippians chapter 3 from verse 13, and I'm going to read it in the New King James. It says, not that I have already attained or I am already perfect, but I press on that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has also laid hold for me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting all those other things that are behind and reaching forward to those things that are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And isn't that what we've all been doing this entire week? Just forgetting everything that lies behind, not because we are perfect, not because we have apprehended, but we are just striving towards that mark of the high calling that Christ has called us into. We continue to press every day, press every morning and every evening. And I am glad to be joining you together with everybody else that has come ahead of me and everyone that will come after me to just say that this one thing we want to keep doing to fix our eyes on Jesus or to focus all our might 
on Jesus Christ. Today I want to be just taking it a bit further of what we have already been sharing. Of all the servants of God that have come uh, ahead of me, want to say it has been a blessing and a joy. And today I just want to add one more course of stone onto the building that the Lord is doing in this place in this season. I'm going to be sharing with us from the book of Numbers chapter 21. Numbers chapter 21. We're going to read a couple of verses, but this is going to be our anchor scripture. Numbers chapter 21. And if you're looking for the title of what I'm going to be sharing, it's titled Look and Live. In this focus edition, what we're going to be looking at is Look and Live. And the Bible says, Numbers chapter 21, I'm going to read from verse 4. Then they journeyed from Mount Hor and by the way of the Red Sea to go around to the land of Edom. And the soul of the people became very discouraged on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water. And our soul loathes this worthless bread, they said. Verse 6. So the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they beat the people. And the many of the people of Israel died. Therefore, the Lord came to Moses and said, uh, Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, Sorry, we have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he may take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. Verse 8. Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and it shall be that everyone who is beaten, when he looks at it, shall live. Verse 9. So Moses made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole. And so it was, if a serpent had beaten anyone, when he looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the ministry of your word. We pray that, dear God, the unfolding of your word will make even the simple wise. That's what your word tells us. At the entrance of your wa word, O oh God, makes the simple wise, O oh God. It brings light. And we ask that, dear God, a light shall appear on our path, every one of us that is going to listen to this, O oh God. And that, dear God, O oh great wellspring of wisdom that you would speak and cause us to hear from you this day. We are open, O oh God, that you would remind us that all we need to do is to look and live, because this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to just do a, a bit of a background of this. By the time we're here, uh, at this point of the story, in Numbers chapter 21, by the time we're getting here, it's very exciting to think that this is the Exodus story that began in the book of Exodus, okay? This is the Exodus story. So the Lord has come. He's breaking his people out of Egypt where they've been in the land of slavery for many, many years. Many generations have been born and died. With that story which began in the book of Genesis, okay? Uh, in the days of Joseph, after Joseph is already... Um, is, he has gone to be a uh, prime minister in Egypt. That's where the story of the slavery begins. Because he, when the brothers come to find solace uh, out of the famine that has been there in the land, then um, this entire tribe is able to be preserved. Egypt, God uses Egypt as a womb to cause his people to continue to grow. Because if they had remained in Canaan, all right, what would have happened is that they would have intermarried with many other tribes. They would have intermarried um, and the small tribe would have been of Israel, yeah? And you remember who was called, whose name was changed from um, Jacob to Israel was Jacob, of course, yeah? So what happened is that out of this one thing, uh, if they had stayed in Canaan, then they would have been swallowed up by the Canaanite tribes or the tradition or the culture of Canaan would have taken them or swallowed them up. But uh, what therefore happens is that the Lord um, causes them to go to Egypt to look for solace, but really he uses that place as an incubation. The Bible records several times that what happened while they were inside there, that the tribe or that the, 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 the tribe of Israel grew to become a big nation. So the Lord preserved us while there. He used it as a womb, as an incubation period. That place of a hardship, God used this used it as an incubation period. Now, the Lord had already spoken to Abraham, who was the forefather, who was grandfather of Jacob, who was called Israel. Grandfather? Yes. Grandfather of um, uh, Abraham was, yeah, Jacob's Guka, and spoke to him and said to him, um, remember, I want you to know positively that I shall bless you. I shall make your tribe great. You shall be the father of many nations. But I want you to know positively that they shall go into a place where they shall go through hardship. They shall go through slavery for about 400 years. But then I shall bring them out and they shall come out with great substance. That's a promise that the Lord gives to Abraham. From the book of Genesis, um, chapter 12, going on to chapter 15 as well, the Lord is revealing himself and saying to Abraham. So this is a promise of God. Even the slavery, that part where they have been put, going through hardship, that is also a 
part of God's plan. All right, I want us to understand that from the beginning. Just trying to put a background and a context to the story. And so the Lord has broken them out. By this time, the Red Sea has already happened. They've already gone and crossed on over. They have seen the victory of the Lord. The Lord has done great things. By this time, the Lord has already provided manna for them, which is what they're referring to as worthless bread that they are having. By this time, they have already missed the garlic and melon combo that they used to have in Egypt and they are wondering you have taken us out of this place by this time they have already seen many generations of their own uh, people they have already witnessed many generations of their own people go through hardship and a difficult season people die in the desert where they were complaining initially at oh there are no why well, there are no graves in Egypt now they have seen that truly they um needed those graves because a whole generation of people has already died if you read before this from exodus coming all the way in before you get to this place where we are in numbers by this time they have already seen people die in their numbers many generations actually by this time these people are, they are just before just before coming into the promised land by the time we're here in numbers 21 they're just before coming into the prom promised land okay so what happens is this that um they have already they are being referred to as the new generation these ones are being referred to as a new generation because the old generation has already almost all died out Okay, though there's still a few of them, but the old generation has already almost all died out. Okay, so this is the background of the story. Now, by the time they are getting to this place in, in, in the desert, sorry, by the time they are getting to this place in the desert, I need you to also understand that the hardship has not come to an end. They are still going through some difficult seasons. All right, they're still facing it. They're still going through facing the music, what they used to call in high school. Our teachers used to tell us, "You shall face the music." They're still facing the music in the in the, in the desert. All right, um, by this time is where the children of Israel have become so so thirsty in the desert and i want you to just think about yourself in a place where there is no water it might not be a desert many of us have not been to a desert but you know you're in a place where it's so dry it's so you're so hungry you're so spent you're so the sun is right there there's nothing for you to cover yourself and shield yourself with from the sun this is what um was happening uh before that just before numbers chapter 21 which is where we've read uh, miriam has passed on moses sister has already passed on she's part of the generation is now out so she's already uh passed on in kadesh where um she's been buried already it is at this place where there was no water for the congregation the bible refers to it as that there was no water for the congregation so these people gather together against moses and aaron and they begin to complain and they say Kwani, what is, what, is, what is the deal with you guys? Because we are thirsty. It, it actually says, if only we had died when our bread died before the Lord. Imagine people have gone through such a difficult season that they actually wish to die. I don't know if you've had an, a running, I'm an opportunity to hear somebody say that. Somebody who has suffered so much and they're saying, I wish I were dead. I wish I were dead. And maybe you're catching us and you want those people. You're saying to yourself, I wish I were dead. Because you're thinking you've gone through so much hardship. Now, Israel was in such a place as this by this point. And so they are saying, we wish that we had died. Why have you brought us up um, to this place that so that we and our animals should die? Of course, if there's no water for the people, there's also no water for the animals. It's a difficult time for them. It is at this point that the Lord commands Moses and Aaron when they go to seek uh, from him. The Lord commands Moses and Aaron and says to them, go to this place and I want you to speak to the rock and the rock is going to give you guys water. And Moses, out of his anger, and he speaks out against the children of Israel. And he says to them, this should be in verse, um, uh, verse 10. He says, hear now you rebels. Must we bring water for you out of this rock? Then 11, Moses lifted his hand and struck the rock twice with his hand. And water came out abundantly. And the congregation and their animals drank. Which was ideally uh, what they wanted, water. But because of Moses' disobedience, where the Lord says, then the Lord says, because you did not believe me to hail me in the name of the eyes of the children of Israel uh, in the land uh, which... Uh, you shall not bring this assembly into the land. This is where Moses loses his opportunity to come into the promised land. And what a sad thing. And we're going to be touching on that just towards the finish. What a sad thing. Because where he had been asked to just speak to the rock, he decides to speak is not enough. I'm going to employ something else. He's going to so he struck the rock twice. And so he lost his opportunity to go back to get into the... Uh, to the promised land and it didn't just cost him by the way it costed him and costed his brother Aaron as well because Aaron went on uh, was gathered up to his people that's what they used to say so Aaron died before him all right so that's what is happening by the time we're getting to what we have just read now again more things are happening because uh, from this point again I'm just trying to 
really make sure that you get where we are, where we are coming from, to paint a picture so that right now we are all standing in the desert together with the children of Israel, Amma with the congregation of Israel. I want us to be there in our minds, in our hearts, so that we can be able to understand the weight of what it is that we have just read. We're going through a difficult, difficult season. By the time... Um, after that, after that great miracle, they need to continue with their journey. The promised land is not so far. was never ever too far, by the way. By this time, when they zururad for like 40 years in the desert, walizunguka, walikuwa nazunguka, it wasn't very far. It was, very, it, was a very, it was a small, a few days journey from Egypt to that promised land in Canaan. A, a few days journey. It did not require 40 years. It was a few days journey. But the Lord took them around. And sometimes I like to think to myself that it was the Lord that caused them. Sometimes they would go to a place, like right before, if you go to the story right before they crossed the Red Sea, the book of Exodus, the Lord speaks to Moses and says to him, I want you to turn back and go to a place um, between, I think it's called Migdol and Pihahiroth. The Lord says to them, I want you to go back to that place, a place where they had already passed. But the Lord says to Moses, no, go back and camp there. While they are in the place where the Lord has told them to wait, Pharaoh and his army chariots catch up with them. 600 of his finest chariots catch up with them. Now, it's crazy to think about what more is happening because these people are exhausted. They have been going around the same place. And if you and me were in the same place, I don't like to think that we would have acted much more differently because we we get frustrated, we get tired. Some of the hardships that we have in this day and age are not even close to as close to draining as the ones that these people were going through. Physical turmoil and hurt and pain and hunger and thirst and all these other things. Yeah? But no comparison anyway. So by this time, they want to cross on over. And they want to cross over through um, this kingdom that is called uh, Edom. The king of Edom. Now Moses sent messengers from Kadesh to the king of Edom. This is verse 14 of chapter 20. Uh, and he says to them, Moses is sending messages to tell the king, listen, you have heard what has happened to all of us. We have gone through a lot of hardship. We have pitied Mambo Mazito Magumu. So please, allow us to pass through your territory so that we can go wherever it is that we are going. Why? Because this was the shortest route for them to go to the Canaan that they were going to. Okay, this was the shortest route. But the king, the, this king of, 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 of Edom says to them, listen, <laughs> no, I shall not allow you, give you passage. And Moses said to this to this king again, he's telling him, listen, listen up, sir. These people will not turn to the left or to the right. They will only use the king's highway. Any water pita too straight. To pita too, ata atuta kunyo majiako, ata atuta kula vainia grapes zako kwa vain. We just want to pass through because it's the only way there. But no, the king says, no, I'm not going to allow you guys to do this. Now, this is what is happening. Actually, by this time, they have to go round another long route. In other words, actually, as you, as you read um, history, history books, they tell you in verse 21 of chapter 20, it says, thus Edom refused to give Israel passage through his territory. So Israel turned away from him. In other words, they were going this way to Canaan. This is where they were going. They could see... Oh, well, I can imagine that it was not so far away. So they could tell that in this general direction is where Canaan is. But when they have been denied, they have to look for another route. It had to go around. They have to go around. So that can be very frustrating. When you know you're almost there and then just before somebody tells you, no, this is not it. As I was reading this, I thought to myself, isn't this what 2020 looks like it has been? This is what it must have been because... We, we were so close, some of us were so close to our dreams. Some of us were so close to our plans, our ambitions. Some of us were oh so close. But then all of a sudden, 2020 has come and you're like, it feels like you have been rerouted. Like where it was just so close. Now it has become so far away because things were closed. Your business was just about to break even. But now all of a sudden you've been thrown about six or nine months behind and you don't know what's happening. It's very tiring. You feel like your heart is just in shambles because what was so near, the plans you had made and the dreams and ambitions that you had, the purposes and the pursuits that you had for this year, all of a sudden, you feel like you're trapped in that place where the children of Israel had been trapped. But you see, if there's one mistake we cannot afford to do, ladies and gentlemen, tonight or for the rest of our lives, is to do what the children of Israel resulted to do. Because what they resulted to do is now what we're talking about, uh, where we read now from verse 4 of chapter 21. They started to speak out against the Lord. It says they were very discouraged. And they were speaking out and saying, why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die? There's no food. There's no water. 
Yani our soul hates this loath lo this loathful, is it that? This worthless bread. Yani they were so angry, even the provision of God was no longer good enough. I don't know whether you've gotten to a point like that already in this year, where you're thinking to yourself, yani God has really, yani hu mwaka kwa kweli, kwa kweli jamani. And you've already begun to speak against the Lord and say, Lord, why would you bring us this way? Why, have you, why are you doing this to my heart, God? I, I thought by now it should have been this way. I don't know whether you've come also to a place in your life where you have been so discouraged by the things that are happening around you that you're wondering, why would you do this to me? Oh God, I thought we had an agreement. I thought, I thought you said you were a good God. This was exactly where they were. And you see, that's the one mistake that the children of Israel did. They spoke out against the Lord. As you read different commentaries, they will tell you that here, um, the Bible says in verse 5, and the people spoke against God and against Moses. You see, this is, this is almost the new, this is the new generation, actually. The older generation, most times, they will just speak out against Moses. Even though God knew, and it's recorded several times in Scripture, even though God knew that he, they were speaking out really against him, even Moses was, would ask them, Sasa, you are speaking out against me as who? You can't speak out against me. We know you are just speaking out against God. But even then, the Bible records that they were speaking out against Moses. But this new generation had the nerve. The nerve. They had the audacity to speak out not only against Moses, but to speak out against God. You know, it's possible for you to be so frustrated by life that you feel like all of a sudden now you can also speak out against God. That's a big, fat mistake. Because even when we are going through difficult seasons, I'd like to remind you, ladies and gentlemen, young men and young ladies, believers all across that could be catching this at whatever time, it doesn't matter what we are going through, nothing in the world could ever make it right for us to lift up our voices against God. You see, what we've been called to do as believers is to lift up our voices to God, to cry out to God but never to lift up our voices against God, to ask God, why would you do this? How can you do this? And you said you are a good God. Yani, you have brought us into this place, and all you're giving us is this worthless, worthless bread. How can you do that to us? Imagine the provision of God. Now, all of a sudden, what he was providing for them? Maybe you're saying to God, Yanni, this is the job that you'll give me, and now, all of a sudden, this is the salary that you're putting in my hand. This is what you're giving to me. You have forgotten that once there was a time that you cried out and said, Lord, remember mercy. If you give me a job, even just to pay my rent, even just, you cannot afford to forget. Do not allow the things of this world, the distractions, because that's what they all are. Ladies and gentlemen, the distractions, do not, do not allow them to give you, to give you this path puff upness that you'll be so puffed up that you're able to actually say, Sasa, sa ini pesa gani yata? Sa hizi yata ni nini? Unde ule bibi mwenye mwenye pati yata fadhali mdu wakai bila bibi. Guys, remember a time when you were single and you were saying, Lords, if you give me any more, then you even took your list. Ulko nasema, I want a guy that's tall, dark, and handsome. I want a guy that looks like this and like you had a list before the Lord. And then you waited for so long. Ulko na miaka inasonga inasonga sa ukambi a mungu God. I just want a guy who is God fearing now. And then now it has gone so much, and now you have gotten to a place and it, God, so long as he's alive and walking with his own two feet. You know, now I'm just ready for anything. And God, in his own mercy, gave you a good person. You know, a born-again young brother, believer. And you guys are doing journey together. Or if you're, a, if you're a man, he's given you a good sister. You know, you can do something together. You can call on the Lord together. But now, after a few years, you've gone through a difficult season like this year has been. Whoo, man. You've gone through a difficult season. And now, all of a sudden, you're like, Uzani nani ulili party? You know, you have the audacity, the nerve. You're saying it with your chest. That's the one mistake that the children of Israel made that you and I cannot afford to do. Hallelujah. All right. So now we are standing right exactly where we need to be standing at what happened. Because when they spoke out against the Lord, there are certain things that are called consequences of sin. Ama the, the consequence of misbehavior. Ama the, yeah, the consequence of, of, of misbehavior. Because... Most of us are great. We are good believers. We are just misbehaving believers. 
So sometimes we find ourselves in a strain, in a line of misbehavior. It's a streak. We're just misbehaving over and over again. With our words, we can speak out however we want to speak against God. Or we can say whatever we want to say. We have forgotten that the provision of God is a beautiful thing. That it doesn't matter what it looks like. It was God that is taking us. You see, at the end of the day, you cannot afford to forget that it is God that is in charge of our lives. It's okay for you to put up your vision board. It's okay for you to plan. It's okay for you to create whatever you want to create. It's okay for you to have plans and purposes and pursuits. It's okay for you to have ambitions. But at the end of the day, what it is not okay, what it will never be okay, is for you to actually think for a second that it is your plans that cause you to move ahead in life. That it is your desires that cause you to move ahead in life. It is your ambitions that cause you to move ahead. Not at all. It is God that runs our life. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 46 that he is the one that is sovereign, that stands uh, from the end. He knows the end from the beginning, he says, and his purpose shall stand. Hallelujah. So, let us not come to ever a place in our lives where we are so puffed up we think that we are the ones that do this thing. We run this life. If anything, the Bible also assures us that Jeremiah 29, 11, that I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for good and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. All right? Now, I need you to also remember that by the time that Jeremiah was speaking this to those children um, that were in exile, to that great nation that was in exile, it was not a good time. They were going through difficult moments. Actually, Jeremiah was saying to them, no, you guys, freedom is not coming today. It is going to come. The Lord is going to come for us, but it's not coming today. We, are, we still have a few more days left in this place of incubation, of pain. But the pain has a plan. So get married, intermarry, build homes, purchase, do this and this, because the Lord says, I know the plans I have for you. That only says to you and to me that our hardship is not a reason for us to behave the way we want or to say whatever it is that we want. Among the things that the Lord has continued to remind us in this season, especially those of you that are members of DCIKZ that may be watching this, if there's one thing that the Lord has been reminding us over and over again, ladies and gentlemen, is that even right now we are still on assignment. Whatever the Lord called you to do, even right now you're still on assignment to do it. Because it is the Lord that resources you. Some of us may have lost our jobs, but listen up, our jobs were never our supply. God used our jobs to supply to us. And when that brook runs dry, or he's able to start another stream of income. When the brook of Cherith dries, he's able to call up a widow of Zarephath and tell her, yo, I'm sending my servant your way. It doesn't matter what you have. Those resources that you have, little as they may be, they are for you and for my servant. So you need to understand that we are still on assignment. You are still called to let your speech be full of grace. You're still called to let your speech be full of of love. You're still called that your actions, they, it is n there has never been a time, God has not called you and told you that now because things are difficult in that your office, you have to start doing things, you know. When they tell you, God has not asked for your help. If you are staying with integrity, you must keep staying with integrity because you are still on assignment. This is not the time for you to say, oh, Nikuzito, I'm not able to raise rent, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call up my girlfriend and we're going to just agree and we're going to start living together to save rent. So you make sense, you make sense. That is just high-sounding nonsense. It is great when you put it on the table and you even call up your friends who are analysts to tell them, hey, na check even if you save. Send your eater to save. Hey, imagine you save. That's true, but doesn't make it right. Na shout. Yaktosha. Great. So the children of Israel has, have gotten to this place where they're complaining even against the worthless bread. They're actually calling it worthless bread. But I need you now to get to this place. He says to them, the Bible says, verse 6, the Lord sent fiery serpents to come upon them. Fiery serpents. And this was just the Lord throwing the consequence of their actions. And so he sent these fiery serpents, and the fiery serpents come, and the Bible says that they beat the, the people and many of the people of Israel died. More of them died. A lot of them were the old generation that were, were, had been promised. They're not going to see the promised land. They died in between, in this season. But see, one good thing, and that's why I'd like us to learn this thing. One good thing about this new generation, even though the one bad thing about them is that they not only spoke against Moses like the previous forefathers, they spoke against Moses and spoke out against God. One good thing now about these ones is that unlike the older generation, they were willing to come back to God fast. They did not have to wait until it's due how many years. They were willing to come back to God and say to God, I'm going to come back to Moses and realize their solution is not in medicine. Their solution is not in what the hands of 
of man can do because we are reminded that the arm of flesh will fail us. In fact, the arm of flesh has failed us before, ladies and gentlemen. How many times have you tried to do something? The Bible call, refers to it as in, um, in Isaiah chapter 50 from verse 10 going onwards, especially if you read it in the Amplified. It refers to it as, uh, Woe unto you who light up momentary sparks and work out your own plans of salvation. Because it doesn't matter what you decide to do at the end of the day, whatever you decide to do, it is temporal at best. Man the plans of man can never compare to the plan of God. There is no time that the work of the hand of God could be compared to the work of the hand of men. If all the men in the world came together and put their hands to accomplish a task, it can still not come close to when just the hand of God is moving over a situation. So that's up to you. You decide, do you want to wait on God to do his thing? Or are you going to just try and work out your own plans? Because the good thing about this generation, and I pray that we would emulate them in this one thing, is that they were willing to understand that their help can only come from the Lord. When they speak against God and against Moses, they also realize that God is the one that is all-powerful and strong. And so they come back to Moses and say, Yo, <laughs> please speak to God. Oh. God has shown his own hand against us. Speak to him. Tell him to just remember mercy. And that's what the Bible says, that Moses uh, prayed for the people. And then verse 8, the Bible says, then the Lord said to Moses, doesn't it just excite you that even when he's angry, he's still full of mercy and compassion? The Bible says, then the Lord said to Moses, imagine how terrible it would have been if the Lord would have said, that's it, I've had enough of the bad behavior, you have been bad boys, go to your room. There was no room in the desert, but you know, if the Lord had just decided to punish these people. But the Lord, because he is full of love and compassion, that even though when there is a lot of sin and it is stinking to the highest of heavens, they still hope, he says, if anyone comes to him, he shall not be turned away. The Bible says, the Lord said to Moses, make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole. Um, and it shall be that everyone who is beaten, when he looks at it, shall live. Anyone. When he looks at it, shall live. The Bible says, verse 9, so Mes Moses did exactly that. He made a bronze serpent, and it was that everybody that looked at it lived. Now listen, it's important for you to understand. It was really, this story ends here. In Mes Apo, Apo 2, verse 8. That is the only thing that the Lord says about this situation, and I need you to understand that. The only thing that the Lord says about this situation is the Lord said to Moses, make a fiery serpent, set it on a pole, and it shall be that everyone who is beaten, when he looks at it, shall live. And that's on period. <laughs> the Lord speaks to this guy. And you see, by this time, Moses has learned. Because earlier, just uh, in the previous chapter, the Lord has spoken to him and told him, I need you to go and speak to the rock. Simple instruction. Speak to the rock. And water is going to come out. But what happens? He goes and he stands in front of them and says, You ungrateful people, must we now do these great things? And he strikes the rock two times. And then water comes out. And then the Lord tells him, Because you could not just obey my simple command, it has cost you the promised land. You're not going to see it. By now, Moses has learned the lesson. Oh, man, when the Lord says, Create a bronze serpent. I can see Moses just running around his assignment. Lest he be told, <laughs> I just sent you to do this one thing. So he's running around, he does, and does exactly that. And I can imagine, this is a time-sensitive assignment. Because the Bible has, says many of the, has said, many of the people of Israel died. So by the time an ambua tengeneza bronze serpent, my friend, kutengeneza yo ma bronze. Anaib, anaita anaib, ma bronze. Ma leteni ma bronze. Ndiyo tengeneza the serpent and set it up on that pole. It is a time sense. I can imagine poor Moses. The assignment, the weight that was on him. Oh, well, yeah, now his brother has died, his sidekick. Now he's just alone out there. <laughs> it must, <laughs> must have been a difficult, difficult time for Brother Moses. When you see him in heaven. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so Moses has created this thing. By now he's very obedient to God. He's doing exactly what he's been told. But I want you to notice that for such a grievous thing as to cry out and speak out against God, for such a grievous thing, the one instruction that God gives, he says, if anyone looks, he shall live. I want to submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, I believe so much that even after this, 
Even after that instruction, even after that bronze serpent had been put up there, I want to submit to you, there are still, I believe, there are still children of Israel that died. Just because of hard-headedness. I'm sure they were going around with their medicine because they had some good medicine, their, their herbs, you know. I'm sure there were some of them who were like, I'm not going to look at it. You see, it's just a simple instruction that has been, been given to you. It's simple. Look and live. Simple. Look and live, but many people will continue to perish because we want it to make sense. We want it to just be something that is so grand. No wonder we trip over what little we know as believers, especially as young people, because the Bible has said that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life all you need to do is to believe in him but how many of our young people are perishing out there how many people in the world why because we don't believe that for all the evil that man can come up with the solution will just be to believe such a simple instruction but because the father of lies is out there working on overtime that filthy old serpent called the devil. He's lying to you and telling you it can't be that simple. Ati, ati just believe. If mambo yetu umefanya, madhambi yetu umefanya. Ah, pana, lazima uchukue kuku mweupe, na uchukue mkia wa panya mfu, na uchukue kucha za nyanya yako, uziweke kwa sufuria uchemshe, uweke asali, ukunywe kama java dawa. Alafu baada hapo, and no sema after kufanya hizo vitu zote lazima nifanya kitu ingine. Imagine, and are there, there are men and women who are going to their wagangas and their wachawis? Because such a simple thing as believe, to just focus on Jesus and I shall live, it looks like it doesn't make sense. But I want to bring it to you, ladies and gentlemen, there's no other way but just to believe. I want to finish by quoting John chapter 3, which G where Jesus, after this time, when God speaks about this again, you don't hear about this story again until much, much later. John chapter 3, and this is um, verse 14 and 15. Uh, if I can get to it fast enough. Um, John chapter 3 from verse 14 to 15, I'm going to read. And Jesus is speaking, these are the words of Jesus, and he says to them, um, Jesus is actually speaking to Nicodemus, this is their conversation. So he says to him in verse um, 14, no, from verse 13. So, Anongelesha and Nicodemus, who had, had answered, um, what must I do to be saved? So, he's talking about salvation. He's talking about the new birth. And so, he says to him, um, listen, no one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven. That is the son of man who is in heaven. Verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then he continued to say, for God so loved the world. Come on here. Jesus is putting a, a simple, simple contrast. He's saying the same way in the, in the wilderness at that time in Kadesh, the, the same time. Um, after that, after Kadesh, the same way that the Lord placed, that the Lord God commanded Moses to place that serpent, bronze serpent, up there and says to him, all you need to do is if you are beaten, you just look and live. If you are stung, just look and you will live. It would have been a thing. It is the same thing. The Son of Man must be lifted up. And when he's lifted up, talking about, of course, his death, when he's lifted up, if anyone believes in him after that, they shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Ladies and gentlemen, I just came to bring it this simple. This is how it is. All you need to do is to look and live. I know the journey may be long, just like for the children of Israel, but all you need to do is to look and live. I know the days may be difficult. All you need to do is to look and live. I know the situation is painful in your family but all you need to do is to look and live the solution for man is jesus it is not many other things you don't have to change a ngombe and ambuzi there is only one sacrifice that is acceptable the sacrifice of jesus christ and that sacrifice was enough if only you learn to just look and live i want to just throw this challenge at you imagine for the children of israel who are beat by the serpents 
and they only needed to sit there and just look up. When you beat, you look up. And I kwa inasema ati ni kama nini, homa ya corona. Ati kikupata mara moja, hayuta kupata tena. No, I don't think that was it. Ilikuwa inakuma, na ikienda hivi ikosa mtu mungine, inakuja, inakuma tena, inakosa mungine, inakuja, ina. It was not at once make one person. That was not the case. I don't believe that was the case. So Joka, Majoka ya likuwa ya meja pale pale. Majoka ya nye uchugu, Majoka ya likuwa na uma watu. But I want to believe that when these things would bite someone, they would look at that thing. I would think the long-term plan for this thing would be to stay focused on that bronze serpent. That if you are beaten, whether you are beaten or not, I just want to keep looking at that. If that is the solution, I'm going to look at it. Now the Bible says that if anyone believes in him, what a beautiful thing it must be for you to focus all your energy into the solution that is Jesus Christ. Imagine if you decided from this last day of September that from today I will keep my eyes on Jesus. I will look at him and live. Not just when the things of life bite me, but every day of my life I want to fix my eyes on the author and the finisher of my faith. I want to look at his beautiful face. I want to listen to his voice. The Bible says, Romans 10, 17, now faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So I don't just want to wait until my faith has ran out so that I listen to him. I want to listen to him every day of my life. So I will submit myself to his means of cleansing. He says to his disciples in John 15 and 3, that you are now clean because of the words I speak to you. What a beautiful thing it must be for me to not just wait until I am filthy so that I can listen to his words. For me to submit myself to his means every day. Like at every moment he's speaking, I am just waiting there. I am waiting to hear from him. The Bible says in, 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 in Proverbs chapter 2 and 6 that the Lord gives wisdom and from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. What a beautiful thing it must be for the whole focus of my life to be to just listen to Jesus. To focus my energies on him. To look on him who loved me first. To set my love on him. All I need to do is to look and live. It may not make philosophical sense. The professors may try to just put it down. Theologians may try to say there's something that we need to do extra. But all you need to do, beloved, are you struggling with addiction? Look and live. And don't just look once. Don't just throw a glance at him. Look at him and lock your focus on him and say, I'm never moving from here. And so, Lord, today I pray for every single person that is catching us from wherever it is that they are. And I pray that, Lord, you would teach us to look and live to fix our eyes on you because that same comparison you made of that serpent out in the wilderness that anyone that looked at it lived you make the same with yourself lord jesus and you say if anyone looks and believes in you they shall be saved and lord we don't want to wait for the difficulties of this life we know that life is it has its own challenges but we refuse to lock our eyes on these challenges of life we lock our eyes on you lord jesus all we want to do is to look and live, Lord Jesus, to look and live. We want to forget about everything of this world and to fix our eyes on this one pursuit that we want to spend eternity with you. But it doesn't matter what comes. When the challenges come, they will find us looking at you. Before the challenges come, they will find us looking at you. After the challenges, they will leave us looking at you because to look at you is to live. Therefore, cause our eyes and our hearts to be turned to you, not just today, but every day of our lives, because this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you and keep your focus on him in Jesus' name. I mean, wow, what a word. Perhaps in, this, in the comment section, you can share what is your take home? What is your take home from the word that Pastor Mashigadi has brought out with so much power? At this point, I would like to invite us to a time of giving. We have a short clip that will um, relay to us the details on how to plug in. Buana Asifiwe, we invite you to give your tithes and offerings online via the M-Pesa pay bill 247247 under the account number 012012 or under the pay bill 864231 under the account number stating the purpose of your gift. You can also send a direct bank transfer to Equity Bank under the account 11802610647000 or you can send it to Cooperative Bank under the account 0112808167.
8600 or to Standard Chartered Bank under the account 0102876532400. Thank you so much for your giving. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to say thank you for the gifts that we have been able to give. We want to say thank you that we have enough, dear Father, that we can bring to you. We pray for every person that has connected through their gift of their giving, that they may know no lack in the mighty name of Jesus. For those who would have loved to, but because of how their life is set up at the moment, weren't able to, dear Father, we pray that you may remember them even in this season because we are focusing on you and we know that you're the God of exceedingly abundantly above and beyond. We ask that, dear Father, you may continue to restore our bound houses. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. Remember today was day four of the Harvest Conference 2020 online edition and I'm sure it's been powerful. I want to remind you that we have our services happening every Sunday. On Sunday, we have the kids service at 8.30 a.m. Um, on Facebook and on YouTube. And then we join each other for the live service at 10 a.m. If you'd like to join us in church for the physical services, remember we are open. We are social distancing. We are wearing our masks. We are sanitizing. We are doing it all. If you'd like to be part of the team that gets to come and join the service live on the ground, live live. We want to invite you to our service. Just dial star 483 star 02 hash. When it asks you for the organizational code, please put in DCIK and follow the prompts. It's super easy to choose the service you'd like. The first service, the second service, the third service, put in your details. If they ask for an ID number, no konayo andika. If they ask for a password number, no konayo andika. And put in all your details and we're looking so, 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 so forward to meeting you here on Sunday. Until next time, where we meet here tomorrow, remember to plug in with us throughout the day. Harvest is happening throughout the day. In the morning, we have our devotionals. During the day, we're going to have some time of real talk where we focus tomorrow on mental health. And in the evening, in the evening, come on, tell your neighbor or tell yourself, in the evening, we have Pastor Alice who will be here just to wrap up the Harvest Conference for us. And you cannot afford to miss. Set a reminder if you'll forget. Let everybody know that we meet here. Same time, same place. Iyo kitu meka, and we meet here tomorrow. Until then, stay blessed. We love you so much. See you guys tomorrow. Baraka.